Yeah. Did you grow up in like a conservative home? I grew up in Berkeley, California during the 60s okay. and 70s. So it wasn't conservative per se. Right. My parents were seekers. My father had been blacklisted. Um, Your well, parents were what? Um, uh, seekers, capital S S E E K E. It's like just like looking around for the world. So they tried. Oh, okay. So they tried ther- all this kind of therapy and all the th- all the therapies of the sixties, and then mm-hmm. w- and to save their marriage and their and their direction in life mm. um, after the blacklisting. Because you know before my father's blacklisting, he had a good radio job. My mother had a good. Why job was he blacklisted? He's a communist. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, this is the fifties. So Don't forget the fifties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the so, McCarthy. Right. Era. He was, he was okay. one, he's one of the last people to get to get picked by picked off by McCarthy. Wow. So two years after that debacle, when yeah. when their life their lives came crashing, to that's incredible. Me, I was born, and so for the first ten years of my life, my parents were casting about how do we, what do we do now? Right. <laughs> you know, um, my mother ended up being the prime breadwinner, which was not what they had expected or planned. Mm-hmm. So there was some tension around that. Mm. My siblings were much older than me, so I'm semi alone with every. So by the time I was mm. ten, my siblings had moved out, mm. and I was alone with the family. And they found Zen Buddhism when I was mm. ten. It's like we have to find something that we can do together, mm-hmm. or we're going to divorce. Mm-hmm. It's just one of these things. And so they, right. they, they reoriented their marriage, they reoriented, reoriented their focus, and started studying Zen Buddhism. And from the time I was 13 until they, did, I, until they died, um, they, were full, they were in in the community. My father, they both ordained as priests. My mother ended up being abbess for a few years. Oh, so, wow. So, it, it's a, it's a, it's, so in terms of, while well, I'm culturally Jewish, um, I am socially very Buddhist. And that, I, that's, that's the commun- community in which I grew up. I'm so mm-hmm. grateful because in the time that they found Zen, which Alan Watts was doing it was very uh, Jerry Brown. The mm-hmm. young Jerry Brown was was we. I met him a few times, but in the same time period, Est was a big thing. In her, in her, in her, Earnhardt seminar training mm-hmm. and Hare Krishna and Scientology. So they thank goodness they picked Zen. Yeah, because Zen will not Zen doesn't permit proselyte, proselytization. Mm. So I was around it, but mm-hmm. they never said you have to sit in meditation, you have to go chant, you have to no. This is this. You're hanging out with mom and dad, and so it was just really nice. And mm-hmm. so I use Buddhist concepts all the time mm. in my in my in my teaching. Do you still find that you <clears throat> identify with that? I do very much so, mm-hmm. um, because the principles of Buddhism are compassion, mindfulness, and personal responsibility, mm. all, of, all of which work well for me. Right. So I grew, grew up in a very um, a time of place of, of social flux, and um, so was the civil rights movement and the gay rights beginning, and the civil rights in the middle of it, and the beginning of the ecological movement. So all the movement stuff, and we can make our life what we need to. So mm-hmm. I really appreciated that. I'm the only. Well, my aunt was gay, gay, gay. Mm-hmm. My mother, my, both my parents in the parallel universe that doesn't exist were, would have been some kind of bi. Mm. You know, some kind of non-traditional relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, my, all my siblings are quite normal. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a, a couple of gay cousins, one lesbian, lesbian kinky cousin, and one gay cousin. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my niece is some kind of queer girl. You mm-hmm. know, uh, but she passes. She's a very femme. She passes for normie if she guesses correctly, and you can't tell. Right. Um, she had no shaved head or pierced face or right, anything right, like right. that. So the. It wasn't that I was raised in a conservative place, but my parents left me a lot of time on my own. Mm-hmm. And their sexuality, they're older. So my father was born in 1915, my mother born in 1926. And so they, while they may have been some kind of proto-queer, the cultural conditioning was just too heavy yeah, to break out right. of whether it was or right. Um, uh, and so they did not, and they, you know, I, I had my first boyfriend was much older, then I had the three-way marriage for 20 years, which mm-hmm. was a disaster. And... But my parents, it took my mother 25 years to get okay Mm -hmm. with what I did. Mm -hmm. Um, And one thing about Zen, of course, I really appreciated this about this particular religion. You know, I came to understand that I was upset because you weren't doing what I expected you to do. And I realized expectations were my responsibility. I love that. Well, thank you, Mom. I love that, that took 12 years. I'm going, oh, I'll take it. And so by the time she died, she realized I helped people and mm-hmm. I had a lot to offer people. And she mm-hmm. did, came with that on her own. Mm-hmm. I did not, you know. Right, um, right. Um, so I'm grateful that it's then. I'm, right. Of all the things, of all the things. And uh, so I knew early on that I was bisexual. So, so going back to the, the, the couple, I mm-hmm. realized I like. This is great. I love mm-hmm. looking at Playboy. Ladies, mm-hmm. ladies, you know. Um, so the first time I saw the word bisexual, I realized, oh, that's me. Yeah. Exhibitionist. Yeah. Voyeur. You bet. So I, was, <laughs> I, was, I didn't have, um, I didn't have, so at least I, didn't, I knew there were, there were labels. By the 70s, there were labels for things I was feeling mm-hmm. that weren't deviant, sick. Right, right, right. And I'm mm-hmm. grateful that I grew up in Berkeley. I'm grateful that my, um, it had its downsides, but I'm grateful that my parents actually 
did more hands-off parenting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had very little to rebel against. Mm. Um, my father once said that. <laughs> my mom would always joke. She was like, I would hope that you would rebel against us and become like really conservative and get like a straight-laced job or something like that. And I was like, sorry, it didn't work that way. She's like, you're supposed to do the opposite of what your parents do. I'm like, yeah, yeah no, that didn't, but, that didn't but, happen. <laughs> no, because your mom had a very exciting life and she was, she's artistic and she's self-employed and she yeah. gets to be her own boss. So why would you want to do anything else but be your own boss? Oh, I know, exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, and no, you're bought your... <laughs> I have so little pers- I did, I knew more about her than I knew her. I mm-hmm. only saw for her twice. Yeah. Um, but the stories around your mom, oh, basically, it's basically just her, her just bigger than life personality. Yeah, it's for just, sure. It's awesome. For so, sure. so, so I, I grew up with a big wig as a mother, but in a, in a different way. So, mm-hmm. what's, it, what's it like having a mom with a large personality? Oh my God, I don't know. It's um, it's it can be overpowering sometimes. Sometimes it's a little bit much. 